Good afternoon, everybody. Um, my name is Casimir. I'm the regional manager for Macmillan in Italy. Uh, thanks for um, coming today, this afternoon. Uh, I would like to uh, start by just introducing our, our speaker today, uh, Daisy De Giovanni. Um, she's a language teacher of English and German, I think. Correct, Daisy? Yeah, it's okay. Daisy De Giovannini, if you please. Okay, there we go. Uh, and she'll be talking today about the innovative mindset, uh, building creativity and adaptab adaptability in di uh, digital learning. So um, without further ado, let me pass the mic over to Daisy and get started. Okay, thank you, Kazimir. I'm very happy to be here with you. And today we will, de we will be dealing with the innovative mindset, so building creativity and adaptability in digital learning. Okay, if you can start my slides, please. Okay, perfect. So uh, I um, I have been teaching English for quite a, lo a long time, more than 25 years, and I am the digital coordinator of my school. I'm an ambassador, Erasmus Plus and eTwinning, and I am really focused in uh, focused on working with technology. Um, so the topic today will be uh, innovative uh, mindset, innovate inside the box, and we will be dealing with some examples of innovative teaching. So uh, innovation is crucial in today's education, but um, it is sometimes very challenging to keep up with the progress. Innovative mindset and well-being are fundamental both for teachers and pupils in order to become the leading actors of a motivating and empowering learning experience. Uh, there will be some practical ideas uh, that are being successfully implemented in everyday teaching to foster the feeling of school community well-being within the innovative approach. Here you see a slide when there is a, a traditional, the picture of a traditional school and a quote by uh, George Kulos. Uh, the quote says, you can fight change, adapt to change, embrace change, create change, and or lead change. No matter your choice, it's not going away. So teachers in the 21st century need to adapt the teaching practice in order to meet the needs of the students, uh, being innovative inside of the box, uh, creating uh, new and better methods to teach the required curriculum. Um, so it is really, really important for us, for, for teachers, for educators, uh, to change the paradigm of education if we want to provide students with the right skills and the right mindset to empower them to create meaningful experience, uh, fostering the autonomy of the learner. And of course, as educators, we, we have to challenge the perception that school subjects aren't useful, aren't interesting in comparison to students' real life. So uh, we must uh, engage and empower students. And uh, wh what does it mean? Engaging is already something very important, but empowering is more important than this. Uh, they say, a bill, um, from a quote uh, by Bill Ferriter, engaging students means getting kids excited about our content, our interests, our curricula. So we, we tell students what we want them to do. Uh, whereas empowering students is a step further because it means uh, giving kids the knowledge and the skills to pursue their passion, their interest, their future. Uh, so we create a sort of a sense of purpose in what they, in what they do. So what is the task of the teacher? Is to empower learners. Um, to do what? To investigate and to make an impact on the world. To become problem solvers, to become innovators, uh, to express their voice and choice preferring to what they know. So I think these elements are really fundamental if we want to focus on a new kind of attitude that we want to foster in our um, education system. So we we should try to spark curiosity, ignite passion, and unleash genius. So what, what does it mean? So curiosity is one of the most important triggers for um, education. 
if you are curious, uh, you will find a way to uh, focus on what you want to do. Um, and of course, also passion is important because we are really shifting our paradigm um, from the content that we want students to learn to a more learner-centered uh, activity where passions and interests of the students are really uh, fundamental. And of, of course, unleash genius. You don't know what you can achieve when you really um, foster curiosity, passion, and empowerment. So uh, when we say here, engage, empower, you see from the picture, the central picture, um, we are actually talking about fostering emotional intelligence in our students. Uh, so the five elements that are present in emotional intelligence are really fundamental when we want to um, provide our students with the skills for the future. Um, and they say it's motivation, self-awareness, self-regulation, empathy and social skills. So, for example, motivation uh, is when the students are being driven to pursue goals for personal reasons rather than for some kind of reward. So they are working not just because they want to get a good grade, they work because they understand that there is a meaning in what they do, and it is fundamental. Then uh, self-awareness is the ability to recognize and understand uh, your moods, your emotions, and how they affect the other. Self-regulation involves being able to control your impulses and moods and to think before acting. So you see that these elements are really important when students work together, for example, in group activities. And then there is empathy, which is very important. Um, if you want to uh, build a team, um, is the ability to recognize and understand others' motivations and to put yourself in their shoes. So generally speaking, all these four elements are important, but there is also one more uh, that is uh, really uh, something that we should uh, try to improve and to foster in communication when we are at school. The social skills in general, so the ability to manage relationships, to build networks, and to connect with people. Um, you will see in a moment that when we talk about the innovator's mindset, we will be um, focusing on this topic, uh, not only from the perspective of the teacher, but of course we are teachers who are ref reflecting on our uh, way of teaching, but we should also think that the characteristic of the innovator should be also transferred in the activity we do with the students and for the students. Okay, so I really believe that in order to empower students, we should develop their emotional intelligence in their everyday activity with us so that the, the, act, the tasks that we prepare are more engaging, more motivating, and of course, they will um, uh, really enhance the four um, skills of the 21st century, communications, uh, communication, collaboration, critical thinking, and creativity. So what is our job? Our job is to serve kids. It's important to uh, enter the class every day with this idea in mind. So we, we are there for them. We are we go to work every day to serve our kids. And if students feel that they are valued, they, they mean something for us, that they are not just, uh, just students, but they are people with their own passions, with their own problems, and we are there to listen, to actively listen to them, you will see that uh, we can really make a change in the life, we can have a positive impact and ensuring students um, that they really mean something for us and that our job is to be there for them. Uh, and so if we have this empowering interaction 
with them, I am sure that something will change. Uh, there is a sentence that the first time I read really made, um, made me think of my you say, everyday relationship with students. No matter what you teach, your students aren't likely to remember every lesson, but they will remember how you spoke and acted towards them, how you make them feel. So um, every time we, when we work, we usually think about our curriculum, what we have to do, a written test and the oral test and grades and numbers. Actually, uh, students really feel empowered and feel valued uh, when they perceive that we are thinking about them. And of course, we are doing our job, but we should also care about our, our students. Maybe asking questions, trying to, to create this sort of bond that will make us work in a better way. So um, I really would like you to get interacting with me because I am telling you things, but I really would like to get um, a sort of feedback uh, on the way in the sense that we are brainstorming on these characteristics. And I think the best way to remember things is to do something. So I just ask you to um, scan the QR code. If you want, you can, oh, you can use a smartphone. If you have a computer, you can click on uh, www.menti.com. And the code number is 86155533. And once you are there, we, uh, we will be involved actually in one activity that I usually do with my students. I am trying to get you involved in my <laughs> webinar and I try to get involved the students in the lesson. So you will act like sort of students here. And you, then you can tell me if you find it interesting, motivating, engaging. So you will be asked some very simple questions. Okay, nothing complicated. We are just reflecting on our role as teachers, as educators. Okay, and we will try to uh, understand if we are already um, innovators or if we still need something. Uh, anyway, the fact that we are here talking about mindset means that you are interested in the topic. Okay, so I would like to share the Mentimeter page. Okay. Let's see if you can, you, you tell me if you can. Uh, okay, you should view the tab. Are you connecting? Yes. Perfect. Four people. Okay. Uh, while I'm here talking to you, I really ask you please to connect uh, so that we can get started. So Mentimeter is one of the four uh, digital tools that today uh, will be presented by me uh, so that we can get ahead with the work. I'm going to talk to you about some very easy way to make uh, lessons more interactive, more engaging. So um, this is one experience on the field. Okay, I'm just waiting a bit more time so that we can get the idea of what we can do. So we will be now talking about innovative teaching. And if you if you can, you can see there is a picture. Uh, this was my source of inspiration. Uh, it is a book by George Kuro, so the same person I was quoting before. And with his book, Innovative, Innovator's Mindset, he really um, um, get teachers started uh, working with innovation in mind. So I really think it's something worth reading. Okay, so I'm asking you, how long have you been teaching? Just to get an idea of how many years of experience you have. Uh, so you see, when you, we use a Mentimeter, you, you get immediately a feedback. So imagine using it when you are in class. You ask a question, a brainstorming question, just to get started. And you immediately see uh these columns going up and down and students really like this and actually uh, you I, I think you noticed you didn't register on mentimeter you just uh, wrote a code 
and that's it. So also for the privacy, you're not asking your students to do anything, just uh, to scan a QR code. If you go to the lab, you don't need them to use the smartphone. I know there is uh, some criticism about using smartphones in the middle of school. It's okay. We do not use smartphones if you don't want to. We can go to the um, tech lab, the multimedia lab. I don't know what you have in your school. And you can get started with these activities working with a computer. So no problem. And students do not register. Of course, Mentimeter is freemium. What does it mean? That uh, you can create two or three slides maximum without paying. But there is no limit in the presentation that you can create. So if you want, you can have um, more activities uh, um, in different presentations. Um, I, I pay for Mentimeter because I think it is a very useful tool. So um, maybe once you get to know some, some tools, you can choose and decide. If you think that this resource is really fundamental, you can pay for it. Otherwise, uh, as I told you, everything I'm showing you uh, today uh, is, is freemium in the sense that you can use it without paying if you want. Of course, there are some limited uh, features, but you can, you can still work with it. OK, so while I was speaking, uh, we we have some more people coming in. OK, so uh, there is a, a great group of people uh, with a lot of experience, let's say, and then 999, uh, an equivalent group of people with already some years of experience. So it's OK. So I am talking to an experienced audience. I can put myself into the last column on the right. So uh, more than 20 years, but I think that uh, we are, uh, in, the more experience we have, uh, probably the, um, the more open-minded we, we, we get in the sense that in the last 15 years, we have seen great changes. So I started working in the, in the field of languages using cassettes, imagine, then CDs. And nowadays we have internet and AI. So one tool that I'm going to show you will be also related to AI. So uh, let's go on with another question for you. And the question is, write a word which characterizes innovation at school, according to you. Uh, with this activity, uh, we are going to um, create a word cloud. I think you all know what a word cloud is. It is a very um, useful tool when you want to brainstorm something at the beginning of a lesson. Or maybe uh, at the end of the lesson, you want to get an idea, a general idea of what you have done. OK, um, now you see there is something uh, and it is hidden because I wanted to hide it. Uh, imagine you are in class and you don't want the students to copy the same idea. But in a moment, I will share because it's not a problem of copying here. I just wanted you to know that there is a feature. Uh, it is with an, an eye that um, really covers the, the answers until I want uh, them to be shown. OK, so I, I, I think that here we have lots of words that could be uh, connected to this idea of innovation. And I, I think it's really nice so that we can maybe comment on some of them. Uh, you have time to to go on writing and you see how nice it is. Also, imagine to have this uh, on, a, on a monitor and a smart, a smart board uh, at school. So students write their answer and then they can learn. Um, yeah, they learn from the others. They can um, talk about their answer. It can be a starting point for the lesson. It could be uh, a feedback. Uh, it's, it's really, really useful. OK, so what can we say? We have technology in the center, yes. Innovation is, of course, connected to technology, but it doesn't mean technology per se, uh, because uh, if you focus just on technology, you forget the end goal of what we are doing. We are not just trying to teach technology to our students, but we, technology is a tool, is 
an instrument we use in order to achieve greater goals. If you just put technology in the center uh, of your lesson, uh, you, you won't achieve what you want. You want to uh, create an engaging uh, environment for your students. Technology can be an help, a help, but not the, um, the end goal. Then cooperative learning. Yes, cooperative learning is something uh, that is really important when we want our students to uh, connect, to develop their emotional intelligence, for example. And we said that emotional intelligence is paramount to um, uh, create um, a new, engaging, empowering um, field of actions for our students. And then flexibility, I like it. Um, then we have, because we, we need to be flexible, so uh, we do not teach anymore as we did in, in the past 20 years. We have to focus on the students. We have to create a learner-centered um, environment where we can really focus our attention on each uh, student. Then we artificial intelligence, of course, it's connected to technology. Active methodologies, yes, okay, it <laughs> moves, and uh, I can't keep track of everything. Uh, um, okay, we have creativity, and then some techniques of debate, learning by doing, teamwork, brainstorming, um, digital books, digitalization in general, socialization, coding, yes, open minded, I like it, open minded, uh, micro learning. Uh, stay in touch, learner center, differentiation. Okay, so I think we are on the same page um, because we want our students to, to create something for themselves. Okay, and um, so next question. You take your time um, and then answer. You see there are uh, two vertical lines one on the right i completely agree so if you agree with the statement you put the you move your mark here on the right uh, and then if you don't agree on the left so what would you put at the core of the educative process mm. you have to move your um scores here one two three four five six and seven so you have seven elements you read them so we are talking about the student the teacher the teachers and the students tech skills if they are at the center the core of educative process the frontal lesson a learning path which focuses on the passion of the students empathetic relationship teacher student or empowerment of the student towards his her own path okay uh, anyway um also in this case i can uh, decide not to show you the answers. You have already seen some of them. But I, while you are selecting um, your personal core of the educative process, uh, I can tell you that this slide, in one slide, you can get seven answers. So if you structure your slides in Mentimeter, um, uh, reasoning on what you want to get, you can have a maximum of eight um, lines here because more than eight is then too too much and you cannot really share it in the right way. So um, if you do not pay for Mentimeter and so as I told you, you have a limitation in the number of the slides, you just create maybe a word cloud and one slide of it like this and you get uh, a great amount of answers. Of course, you have to study carefully what you want to have and technology can be really helpful so technology as i told you is not the end goal but it is uh, an instrument that you can use in order to make your teaching innovative a bit more engaging and students really like those things and uh, they get engaged very quickly so let's check now <laughs> Um, what can you see when you have a slide like this? Mm. Uh, if you put your marker on the on the on the on the line, you will see 
uh, by the way, it's anonymous, so I don't know who said uh, the students here so disagree or not. So I, I'm not checking who said what, but I can feel the the average. So I say 34% said five, and some others here randomly the other points. It's okay. So. If we analyze this slide, we can say that we have the core of the educative process, the student, yes. And uh, there is no right or wrong answers here. Uh, we just want to, um, let's say, uh, have a silent debate on this in the sense that you express your points of view. And we, we I can, um, of, of course, I, I agree with you and I try to lead a sort of debate from distance. Uh, where we we share our ideas. So 40 people said that uh, the student should be at the core of the educative process. Okay, and then we have a 2.5 out of five. Um, yeah, okay, uh, the teacher is always present. Maybe he's not the core, he's a sort of mentor, a sort of facilitator, a person who can help, but who stays not in the center, but uh, let's say behind the curtain, watching and being ready to intervene. Then, um, of course, the tech skills of the teachers and of the students are important because if the teacher cannot master any technology, uh, we cannot talk about innovation with technology, okay? So the teacher should be the one who introduces uh, maybe a new tool, something to the class and then uh, the teacher asks students to to go on and to in, to um, develop their skills on this but of course the teacher should be there present to help when the students cannot do anything or can have a, a problem it's important um, I always say that it's not really important to master all the technology that is present for education because you know uh, the evolution is really really fast so you should focus on something you can master something that you think is useful and then maybe you introduce one new tool at a time so that you can get uh, the, the the real feeling using this tool and also your students uh, can get involved and they can uh, rely on you if they need help. Of course, we say that our students are uh, really uh, good at technology. Yes, but I think that uh, the technological devices and the technological tools that are developed for education need, of course, the supervision of a teacher because the teacher must uh, show what is important and then, as I told you before, as a, a sort of a mentor, uh, the teacher is there to help, but it uh, lets, he lets students uh, work, um, make mistakes, and do discoveries, and everything is okay. Frontal lesson, okay. The frontal lesson uh, shouldn't be banned from school just because it's something old uh, the frontal lesson some specific moment of our uh, teaching practice is important but it is not the only way we have to teach our content okay so the frontal lesson is not at the core but it should be present sometimes when it's needed okay then um we said that at the core of the education process we have a learning path which focuses on the passion of the student. And you said 4.2, so it's a complete yes. Yes, we are trying, as uh, our, I, I told you at the beginning of this webinar, it's it's important um, to, to get the students aware of the fact that they mean something for us, so they can show us uh, our um, their, their passions, their interests, and they will feel valued and they will respond better uh, and they will start a, a bond, a relationship that is deeper and really um, uh, important for their growth. Not only their cultural growth, also their personal growth. 
then empathetic relationship teacher student yes the the, the two are uh, the two elements here are linked because once uh, we focus on passion of the student it's uh, immediately uh, clear that we want to start a relationship with them and the empathetic relationship is a game changer in a class okay and then empowerment of the student towards his or own learning path okay creating a sense of purpose is something that the school should do uh, nowadays um, you know the the kind of jobs for the future that will be maybe the most uh, needed in 10 years time probably do not exist now so what are we teaching our students we are teaching them the skills in order to be ready for the future. So the emotional intelligence is fundamental. This innovators mindset that we teachers should share with them is fundamental to face all the struggles, and the difficulties, the challenges of life. OK, so what is the school? The school is not just um, teaching dry subjects. So we really should um, should um challenge the perception I, I told you before that school subjects aren't useful aren't interesting uh in comparison to students life no uh, we have to equip our students with the skills that will be fundamental for their development um then this is the the last slide for a moment um in in a moment we will be talking about this but i want you just to give me your uh, immediate feedback so in your opinion how important are these characteristics in order to be an innovative teacher of course all these characteristics are quite important but we are going to talk about them in a moment so i just want you to get an idea of what do you what you think is important and we are going to say something about this to express some comments and then maybe you will discover something and so we focus on resilience empathy team building with colleagues or so networking creativity uh, the fact that an innovative teacher is a risk taker and also a problem finder. And the fact that it's really important to reflect and to observe the world around us when, when we are working. Okay, so um, generally speaking, we can say that all these aspects are important, but I just want to see your your feeling your gut feeling about this so here we have uh, you already know that these characteristics are quite important so they are more than four okay it's a like four, four out of five of course um so let's see if someone gives an answer okay so we have uh more or less um the majority of these characteristics over 0.4 uh, it means that you you understand that um these elements uh, these characteristics are uh, something that really um characterize our way of teaching yes so okay uh, i'm not going through them because you see uh, everything is already um above 0.4 so we we share the same um ideas on this so if we return back to uh okay our presentation our slides uh, I would like to go on with my slides, okay? Perfect, thank you. Um, so here we have 
two big slides you see i want to show you one and two um if you want to be an innovator uh you have to share this kind of mindset probably you have heard of fixed mindset and growth mindset um here we are going a step further um because we are introducing a new topic uh, the topic of the innovator's mindset so the innovator mindset is empathetic what is empathy here what does what is the role of empathy oh, the empathy is really important because it shifts the point of view from the teachers to the students in terms of the classroom environment and learning opportunity in we we talk about interacting with the content in a meaningful way and of course it is learner centric we spoke about the fact that now at the core of the educational path we have the students so it's learner centric and it focuses on the students uh, interest and uh, can empathy be learned uh, yes you can work on it but of course everyone um, has an innate sense empathic sense emp sorry empathetic sense uh, you have to work on it if you want to improve it but i think that once you are aware of the fact that empathy is so important in our job and let me say it it's important in every relationship in every social uh, communication we have inside our job and outside our job so generally speaking in life uh, i think that everyone should focus on being more empathetic with the others then the second point is problem finder or problem solver um we can say that finding uh, the problem is uh, an essential part of learning but student teachers should step aside um and walk along the students and let students ask questions of course supporting them uh, in a way that encourages uh, them to find their own solutions so um we don't do not give students uh, all the elements to solve a problem we can ask them to, to find the the problem and to try to solve it so um we should engage students in their own uh, educational path it, it could be more engaging it could be more stimulating then risk taker the innovator is a risk taker because you know every time uh, you try something new you risk and what are you risking you are risking uh probably to if you take a risk you can be successful or you can fail but um, I saw uh, some time ago uh, a picture with the acronym FAIL, F-A-I-L. And they say, don't worry if you fail, because FAIL means first attempt in learning. And uh, I, I, I really thought that this sentence, uh, this picture was so enlightening. So, okay, of course, you can make a mistake, but it's part of, of our a growing uh, career so uh, the innovator is a risk taker because innovative teaching and learning involve taking risks and also students should be encouraged to take risks as part of the learning process and this is a very important point if we think about uh, students taking risks and making mistakes we should really avoid uh, just focusing on mistakes. Let's try to find the positive aspects in, in the mistake. Mistake means I am trying. If you don't make mistake, you are not really evolving in your process. So if you make a mistake, okay, thank you for making a mistake. I always tell my students when they say maybe something wrong, I say, okay, thank you for for your sentence uh and thank you for making this mistake because this can be useful for the rest of the class because we are highlighting one aspect that probably was not completely clear okay so mistakes are normal and 
when you take a risk, you can make a mistake, but you are growing. You are in the process. Then the next part is networked. Uh, I really like this, this word, uh, to be networked. Uh, it, it's, it's difficult sometimes, but it gives you a lot of help if you want to evolve. Um, there is Stephen Anderson that said, alone we are smart, but together we are brilliant. Yes, if you really uh, find a group of like-minded teachers in your school, you will see that your job becomes easier. And it is really nice to share ideas, to share feedback, also to share the positive criticism. Um, so innovation develops when teachers are connected and they are willing to share their experiences in order to learn and practice new strategies. And I think that uh, isolation is often an enemy of innovation because uh, if you if you are alone and uh, you cannot share what you do um it's sad so one thing that i really try to do also in my school uh, and i also the digital coordinator of the school so my role is to get in touch with teachers um i think that if you build a community if you show things and if you are ready to listen to the others and uh, of course, you, you give something, but you also learn something from the others. You will see that your um, working environment improves in better. Hmm? Then um, another characteristic is um, when the innovative teacher is observant. Where does inspiration come from? It comes from everywhere. Um, inspiration is everywhere and often in unexpected places um you just need to keep your eyes open and maybe something you see or on, on tv maybe or in a book or while you are walk, walking you get the idea the light bulb moment we say oh yes of course so you you should be always thinking about what you have around you and maybe you can get this inspiration to be innovative. Then, of course, the innovator's mindset is based on uh, creating something. Learning means um, creation, not only consumption. Okay. So, um, if you think about our students, knowledge is something learners create in the learning process, integrating new meanings. Uh, creating a personal connection to the information. So it's really important that uh, we foster this idea of creativity because, uh, as we said before, um, learning is means creating something. Then, resilient. Um, resilient is, of course, connected to the fact that innovators' mindset um, has the the ability of taking risks and we said if you take risk you can fail okay but you are resilient if you are resilient um you have the possibility to um to change your feelings in front of the difficulties of the challenge uh, so anything new and different from the norm can be seen as threatening uh, difficult um but if students are challenged in their learning experiences um helping them become resilient um and facing ad adversities is fundamental okay and then they can also be reflective um so um both teachers and students they reflect on their own path so that they can really grow and in this slide you see that uh, students and teachers, okay, this, um, what we say about the innovator's mindset um, is valid both for teachers and for students. So uh, if you start from a fixed mindset uh, in where challenges uh, are seen as something negative, uh, obstacles, you want to give up, uh, effort and criticism is negative, and you are not happy with the success of the others because you feel you are threatened, this means fixed mindset. And you move to a growth mindset, which was this term was um, invented by 
um, Dr. Carol Dweck. Um, and there is a video in the, um, the sources that the power of yet that I really suggest watching because it's very short, but really, really effective. So the growth mindset uh, makes you see challenges and obstacles as something positive for you because they make you go on and try new things. And also criticism uh, is considered a feedback. So if you, uh, if you fail, uh, th there should be a reason why. And the feedback is the thing that makes you succeed and go on and try again. Um, OK, um, so in the innovator's mindset, everything is seen as uh, a challenge that can really give you something in, in change. So you should be you shouldn't be afraid of trying. Um, also, the success of the others can be seen as uh, an occasion to improve, to grow. And we must create opportunities for our students. Uh, of course, in the relationship we create, and we oh, we have already said something about this. So the most essential thing in, in the class is the relationship because it empowers to connect. And if you don't connect, you will have also problems in conveying the meaning of your teaching. So the knowledge doesn't happen if you feel you are in an um, environment that doesn't value you. So um, you should focus on um, a learning environment where the learner is in the center. And he has voice and choice in setting expectations. Um, so you move, you shift from the theory of the failure, of the flaws, of the mistakes, and you focus on the strength of your student. Instead of saying, oh, uh, everything is wrong, all the mistakes are here, uh, you should focus on the positive aspects, the positive things achieved, and then you can improve. I like this quote uh, a lot. When a flower doesn't bloom, you fix the environment in which it grows, not the flower. Think about this. It's a source of reflection. If you really cherish your student, uh, you try to change something around him in order to make him learn. Um, I think this is the core of the change of paradigm that we are going, uh, we are trying to, to make when we want to teach with innovation. And of course, the empowering experiences are fundamental. I am trying to arrive to the end of the presentation in order to show you some examples. So uh, we are not talking about uh, the usual activities, exercises um, in the book with exercise book, but maybe we can ask our students to do something different, to write blogs, to uh, create a podcast, the videos, um, things that probably uh, can really reach the, um, the, the skills of our students. So we teachers must lead the way. So we are master learner and master educator because we know that the growth is essential. And uh, the fact that we are uh, lifelong learners means that we want to learn. And it says here, it's not age related. Uh, we are not old. Uh, we are maybe experienced, but um, an, an innovative teacher wants to go on experimenting and trying. Uh, so learning becomes a way of life. Here are four different um, examples. There are many more, but I just wanted you to get an idea of what you uh, can do with the technology in mind, but focusing on a uh, learner-centered uh, envir teaching environment. So um, I am showing you now, um, we have already talked about Mentimeter because we, you were working with me with Mentimeter. And we can check now Sutori, OK? Um, I think you can see it. Yes, perfect. So. Um, Sutori is, again, um, a freemium uh, tool in the sense that you can use it also without paying um, for it. 
um, what can you do? It was born, <coughs> sorry, as a, a timeline. Um, here I present you an activity done by my students about suffragettes. Okay, instead of uh, just reading a paragraph or two in a book, I gave them some uh, videos to watch. Okay, so here there are videos. Here there are some websites with um, information. And then I asked them to interact. I gave them instruction to watch the video and to write a post about different topics uh, or ways related to uh, the, um, the suffragettes. So here from this side, this is not yet the presentation, you see um, lots of paragraphs done by my students, okay? They wrote text. Uh, there is something um, which is really nice in Sutori. You can have the possibility to record voice. So you can actually create a podcast um, just using um, a smartphone or a computer. So if I present it, let's see. Okay, uh, I'm checking. Okay, perfect. So if you say it, this is the, the presentation. It's, it creates a sort of slides that you can see, okay, this was the video, this was the instruct, these were the instructions. And when and where did the suffragette movement start? The post Who started it? Of my students reading, okay. And what is important in this? That I have a sort of inclusive uh, tool because, um, for example, for students with DSA, we have some problems um, reading, I can uh, really, record everything it is written so that they can also interact with it and i think that um, uh, sutori has great um, a great use in uh, in teaching in general uh the second one the second tool that i want to share is canva i i think you know canva um, everyone knows Canva. Okay, at school we use it. And I have um, come up with an idea um, to make students work on the same topic in a different way. So this was the story of a person. We had uh, a text in the book. So instead of just reading the text and asking them to tell me what they have learned from the text, so quite boring if we, I have to ask uh, 20 students about the same story. So I'm, I'm sharing you what I did. So here we have, of course, um, a presentation for everyone, uh, for all, sorry, for all the class. We went to the lab, they checked uh, the group, and then they select their slide, and then they add the information. These are the tasks. So I invented four different tasks um always related to the same topic so it was not tell me the story of this person but uh, look for information about the character and the second one look the, for information about the the movie the third write a different final for the story the fourth uh, write a dialogue between the protagonist and his mother and then uh, just because we were just studying conditioners i added some sentences in, in the line. So what would you do if you were the protagonist finally meeting his mother? What would you do if you were Saru uh, alone in the street of Calcutta with the foster family in Australia on the train alone? So different perspectives. These were my students. Okay, I, I, I took some pictures and they were really happy to invent their own name there. And then they created you see here group number one, their story and their sentences, if I were Saru. This is group number two with the movie and uh, the reflection on the movie and their sentences. Then we had group number three. It look, um, please um, uh, note that students also um, thought about the layout of the page. So I think this layout is quite nice. Okay, so they, they took some pictures from Canva. Okay, so they are um, free from copyright. 
uh, and they wrote a story, okay, a new ending for the story. And then the, the sentences, and in the last group, they invented the dialogue, okay. And I put here, uh, for example, here, well done, uh, a comment, okay, and the positive comment is also, um, is a positive feedback that students really appreciate. And they also did something more here because they wanted also to have a sort of timeline. And this was not asked, but they said, okay, we still have time. We can do something more. And I said, yes, okay, this is empowerment. So you do something not because you get a mark, but because you, you can and you want to show it. So I was really happy. I asked them for the sources. And you see here, two groups put the sources and the other two didn't. So it, the, those things can happen, but it's not a big problem. They managed to do the activity. And this was the class and they were really happy. One last thing that I'm showing you is here. Um, the, oh yes. Okay, now you can see it. Okay, this is a chatbot with AI. You know that AI is really, really, uh, changing the the landscape of teaching and um, nowadays there are already two or three sites that um, give you the possibility to create uh, chatbots for educational chatbots and um, i am using this one this is mizu but there are others from major school ai and every day there is something new okay but i'm showing you this because i have um, a, let's say a personal first-hand experience in using it. Um, uh, one month ago, I discovered this and I started uh, creating a chatbot. Uh, we were working on civil rights and the civil rights movement. So um, we were talking about Martin Luther King. After working on it, I created this chatbot. It's very easy. There are lots of tutorials online. So uh, you can ask the AI to create it for you. So you, you don't actually do anything. Uh, in, um, you just uh, select the grade if you want it to be for uh, primary students, primary school pupils, um, secondary school. So you change the grade, grade four, grade eight, grade four, you know, 12, whatever you need. Uh, I have here grade 12 because I teach in a um, liceo, a secondary school. Uh, so I, I told the AI, you are Martin Luther King and you are asked to interact in a Socratic dialogue with uh, your interviewer. And then I said, the student is the interviewer. Please talk to Martin Luther King and discuss the features of the speech. I have a dream. And I really can assure you that the first time that I did it, uh, it was really quite shocking because because if you get engaged in this you really feel you are talking with Martin Luther King and the AI answers you as it were he were Martin Luther King um it's also very inclusive because uh, you can see there is also the picture of a mic you can either write your sentence or record your voice and the AI recognizes your voice and transcribes it in a sentence that you can then send. And also you see here, also Martin Luther King has the possibility to talk to you if you click on the on the play button, okay? You can listen to him when he starts saying- Welcome to our interactive interview with Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Ready to explore his legacy? Okay, uh, so uh, anyway, um, now in this moment we do not have time because we are finishing but i really wanted to show you how uh how many possibilities we have here uh in improving and innovating our teaching but of course first of all we have to have the goal the end goal in mind we cannot just say okay we work with some technology we we have to have clear ideas what we want to achieve. For example, here I wanted the students to interact with Martin Luther King because I wanted them to discuss about civil rights and the metaphors, the images that they have started. And it was really impressive to see my students so engaged. I, I, I set a time 
uh, at, um, it was uh, 30 minutes and they said oh we we really wanted to go on talking but then it, it finished I said so next time no time limit you can go on and talk so I really feel that uh, the teachers as educators we have um, great possibilities great challenges uh, but we can really change the way we teach and of course we can make a change uh, with our students putting them in the center of the process okay Kazimir yeah well thank you that was uh, very interesting um, we're about out of time now I don't know if there are any final questions we might have a chance to answer one or two um, from the audience. If not, um, I think we can wrap it up. But yeah, interesting. Very good. I, I, the comments seem to be quite positive. So I think they took a lot um, away from it. I know Monday I will be sending additional information um, shortly uh, following up from this uh, webinar. So uh, I would like to remind everyone that uh, the week of the 9th of March, we'll be having some events in Turin, Milan, Padova, uh, and Florence, and Naples. So if you're in one of those cities, uh, maybe we'll get a chance to see you live as well. So thanks, everyone. Have a great evening. Thank you very much, Daisy. And uh, we'll um, catch you all again very soon. Goodbye. Thank you very much. It was a pleasure. Bye-bye.